Community Trends reports Gate 63. The Gate 63 is called the Gate of Doubt. Um, another name is uh, Questioning, the Gate of Question. I'll explain in a minute. Uh, but let's start by looking at the meanings of, and the names, the different names for the gate. Um, I have, have up here this image of uh, the famous image of, of St. Thomas doubting the, doubt, uh, the the origin of the expression doubting Thomas. Um, the story is that Thomas was uh, incredulous. I think this one is called the incredulity, the incredulity of St. Thomas. Uh, he doubted that um, Jesus indeed had a wound and he felt the need. And it's very interesting from a human design perspective that Thomas, his doubt was, um, he, he felt he had to touch the body, touch the wound, physically touch. And, you know, human design is all about um, the form principle. So I really love that um, image for the doubting, the gate of doubt, right? Logic. Um, gate 63 is part of, we'll talk a lot about uh, it as part of the circuit of logic in the body. And logic um, takes that denoting of doubt and questioning uh, from gate 63. Um, you, you can use that as a keynote for the entirety of the logical process. I will show you how that runs through the body graph and where we can find it. Um, one of the things that I'm emphasizing for you as we go uh, week, you know, week by week, and we look at where the sun goes into transit is that I am trying to show you how these different gates um, occupy diff not only different location in the body graph, meaning, you know, what center this is in. And in the case of the 63, it is our first um, gate that is in the head center, the very top of the body, the crown of the body graph, the crown center, um, gate 63 is also a part of the logical circuit. And it's the beginning of the mental logical process. We will talk a lot about this. Okay, so the names, gates, uh, this is the gate of doubt. Um, it's, uh, a, has a lot to do with uh, suspicion and distrust. And I know that all of this can sound really bad, but remember that human design is a dualistic um, um, approach, meaning that everything can kind of function as a binary and can be uh, the same way that suspicions live in the 63. It can also be the um, the, the, the place of, of, of trust and, and lack of suspicion. Uh, it's about, and we'll talk a lot about that, the suspicion is supposed to be for information and events and things that are happening outside of you. It's not supposed to be um, suspicion like or doubt. It's not supposed to be self-doubt. Uh, it's not supposed to be about you not trusting yourself, but a lot of the time, this is what ends up happening. It's all about the beginning of the logical process, which is to look in some, uh, at something and and doubt and ask questions and say, is it really, you know, is one and one, two? Let's try again and make sure, right? The idea with logic is that you repeat again and again and again uh, the experiment um, in order to see that it still yields the same uh, result, the same pattern. All right, so get to question, the gate of questions. Uh, this is where, you know, we, we ask really good questions. When we look at uh, the different gates, um, we're looking at them from a, uh, a point of view that has to do with creativity and their creative potential. My expertise is in the creative process and in helping people uh, go from being stuck to get to being you know unstuck and, and unblocked and flowing. Um, it's really important to understand the the place of questions um, and not not just in the creative process. But in any kind of process that has to do, you know, all processes are created for me, right? But it's 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 in life, it's in relationships. But definitely, if you are creating um, um, any any kind of a creative uh, project that has to do with creative expression, you want to spend time and give yourself time in the process for the very very crucial important early stage of asking good questions. All right, uh, Karen Kerry Parker in quantum human design uh, provided um, 
kind of more uplifting name for this gate is she called it the gate of curiosity. Uh, again, it's a way to, I think, highlight um, um, a more uplifting potential here. Um, it's a kind of nicer name for suspicion. It's like, oh, this is making me curious, right? Um, and I think that um, that name curiosity really helps highlight something about that's very fundamental to the process of the 63 and actually also the process of the two other gates that we have in the crown, gate 61 and gate uh, 64. All of these, all of these gates, these three gates that we have in the crown are gates of inspiration. And they're also gates of pressure. I will talk about all of this in a minute, but in uh, a nutshell, everything that happens that comes from the head, um, and and I don't know if you know, but Ra explains that the the crown actually sits not inside the the form the body, but it's kind of like above the uh, above the body. Uh, it's it's a place where we channel inspiration from outside. I have the head center completely undefined, completely open, so. I, I have openness in all of these three. And I often tell people that when you have this open, it's like you have a radio um, uh, dial in your head and you can kind of go in between all of these stations and get inspiration from all of them. You're not fixed to get an inspiration only from one of those. So the whole idea of inspiration, curiosity. Uh, so here I qualified it a little bit. This is logical inspiration. So this is the kind of inspiration that can start you on a logical process. We will talk a lot more about this in a minute, but um, um, that's, the, that's, that's the gist of it. And then uh, the last name that I have here is actually the name of the gate from the original itching, and uh, it's called After Completion. And it's kind of funny, Ra always talks about this as a little bit of a joke. Uh, he says the Chinese have their jokes, and the joke here being that... Um, you know, it's the gate one before last, right? The gate 63 out of 64, and they call it before completion. And Ra says that the meaning of that, the, the reason that they call the gate one before last, they call it after completion, is to indicate that every end is a new beginning. We are on a wheel and everything keeps going, right? So it's 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 kind of playing a little bit with this. All right. The location of gate 63 in the body graph, uh, here you can see I uh, placed a little bit of just a headshot, literally the head centers. Um, and these are the gates I've talked about before. Here's the, the 63 is here. The 64 on the other end, I'm going to talk a lot about today because the 64 is actually in the earth right now. So whenever the 63 is in the sun, the 64 would be in the earth, meaning these gates are polarities, they're mirroring, uh, they're mirrors of each other, and they are traveling around the wheel together. Uh, and then in the middle, we have gate 61, which uh, is the individual inspiration. So 63 is logical inspiration, 61 is individual inspiration, and 64 is uh, another collective inspiration, but it's the abstract side um, right, while the 63 is the logical side of the collective, the 64 is the abstract or storytelling side of the collective. Okay, so they're in the head crown and it's a pressure or inspiration center. I want to I'll stop you here just for a minute to just also explain. We have several types of, of, of subgroups in the centers, right? We have centers that are awareness centers. We have centers that are uh, what we call a motor, meaning from the word engine or a motor, like so it's the sacral, um, for example, is uh, and, the, and the ego are motors. The um, um, ajna is an inspiration center, for example, right in the head, um, the uh, or awareness centers, right? And so... We, I just want to, I was just wanting to highlight that the top and the bottom, right? So the head center and the root center are also known as pressure centers. While the, the pressure that comes from the root is adrenal root chakra, right? It comes from the earth and it's this pressure that gives fuel that's adre ad actually adrenaline. The pressure that comes from the head center is mental pressure. And this is why, and here is a little bit of a, a warning. And again, I'm bringing you this information straight out of Ra's teaching. Ra talks about 
um, the, the, the problem with the pressure that comes from the head or any kind of um, decision that you make from the mind or from the head is that the frequency of the mind is over all time, right? While the frequency of the spleen is in the now, um, and even the frequency of emotions that you have to go up and down and right, it, it's over time, right? But it's cyclical, right? The abstract, it, you have a cycle that begins and ends, right? It begins in the 53 and then it ends in the 42. There are areas in the um, the graph, the body graph that, that are either about being very much in the now, like the spleen and integration as well. And then there are areas where you have cyclical uh, processes, but everything that happens in the mind, and especially, God forbid, God is forbid, if you make a decision from your mind, which is never, ever the correct place from which to make a decision, right? It's never, mind never has inner authority. The problem with it is that this, the frequency of that decision stays with you for all time. Make of it whatever you would make of it, but you can understand the kind of pressure we're talking about. And this is mental pressure. And therefore, remember I talked about how the spleen has an anxiety and fears attached to each gate. The um, solar plex or the emotional center has anxieties and nervousness attached to each gate. In the crown and the ajna, we talk about mental gates of anxiety and pressure. And most likely, if you suffer anxiety, uh, as in diagnosed, whatever kind of on the spectrum of anxiety disorders, do yourself a favor and go look at what you have going in your head and ajna, because a lot of the time, especially when we get really kind of into worry and, and ruminating, ruminating is the kind of behavior when you are really stuck on, on, on something and you can't stop being stuck in the loop mentally of thinking and thinking and thinking about it. Um, the, the question we have for deconditioning our head center is, are you still thinking about things that don't, do not matter, right? All of that, you can see it's converging around this head center as a pressure center. Uh, on the flip side of the positive side, this pressure can be inspiring. It can be an inspiration. But if you are kind of caught up in the anxiety um, of whatever, um, right, e each of these gates has a different anxiety. We'll talk about this. Uh, here in the 63, it's the anxiety that you will be misunderstood. If we look at the keynotes, this is the logic and uh, circuit, and it's also called the understanding circuit. So it's all about the process of humans trying to understand, not making sense, that's in the abstract, understand, that's logic. So if you are afraid in the 63, the anxiety is that your logic would not be understood. Now, pay attention again in terms of the keynotes. It's a transpersonal keynote because it's in the collective. It's about sharing. So you are anxious that you will share your logic, you will share your understanding, and it will not be understood. And that's an anxiety that resides in that 63. All right. And we didn't get to the 64, which is interesting right it is it's it's kind of they're mirrors of each other and they also both live in the same center it's a very interesting uh combination that 63 64 uh and i actually live with a person who's uh uh who has this in in their cross this is called the cross of consciousness that's specifically where where my partner has it and i can therefore uh not only it's funny not only is my partner on that cross but like three of my best friends <laughs> And two of them are a father and a son. Very interesting. My friend, um, I'm not going to name names, and his son are also on that cross. So you can kind of start looking around at your the people that you have, and you will see that a lot of people that are your that you end up att attracting and being attracted to are on similar crosses or uh, even on the same cross. Okay, so the 63 is a, a fuel or a pressure of suspicious patterns or not. So it's there to recognize, to start a process of looking at a pattern. And that is very much the, the, the gist of what the logical process throughout the body graph, wherever you have it, is um, kind of conditioned 
by that idea of looking at patterns and deciding if the pattern is uh, suspicious or not suspicious. Do you doubt the pattern or not? I'll stop in a minute just for a minute just to emphasize. What is that about the whole I will recognize a pattern? Is the pattern okay or should I? Uh, and here I'm going to use the uh, keynote from another logical channel. Should I challenge the, the pattern? Should I criticize or offer a correction for the pattern? And this is from the 1858, which is between the root and the spleen. I have that one, so I know all about it. This is very much the business of the logic. I want to say a, a little bit more about the timing and the uh, um, the type of process in terms of time and temporality that we talk about when we talk about logic. Logic tells us Ra, is the collective side of things where we look at the patterns in the now and we try to recognize what is the pattern, right? What is the logical pattern? And why are we looking at patterns to see if they're good or not? We want to be able to predict based on the pattern that we see in the now what will happen next? So the entire human story of, um, of science, of logic, and it's very much a collective thing. Uh, and Ra talks a lot about that, how science always happens by committee. And science is always starved for energy. And energy is money. And this is why when you are in a university, you know, you often work with a lot of other scientists and together you write a grant and then you go and ask for public funding because it's a lot of money to prove whether your pattern is correct or incorrect. So scientists look at a pattern and they say, well, here's a pattern of cancer. We found a pattern that seems promising that maybe if we intervene here, we can cure that cancer. In order for us to do that, we have to go out and ask for funding. This is the, the business of collecting. All right, let's put together a committee of all the scientists, right? And we will write it. And then it will be sent out and another committee of scientists that are um, blind peer review, right? Like that do not know the scientists uh, that wrote the grant. They will read it. They will judge the pattern that these scientists are proposing to recognize and experiment with. They will say whether or not this pattern is suspicious or promising, should we be experimenting with this pattern? It, then it goes back to the funding agency, right? And, and they make a decision. Why am I getting into all of that process? Because logic is a place of a lot of stuckness in the creative process in our body graph because, tan tan tan, we don't understand how it works. And so wherever you have logical, and there are a lot of logical dates and, and, and channels and streams, and I'll show you in a minute, you are by design, by the design of the body graph, you're going to be conditioned on this collective process that has many stages, that takes a lot of time, that usually involves a collaboration or cooperation, or at least having to engage with the others, having to engage with other people, having to have them recognize and understand your pattern, your challenge of the pattern, et cetera, et cetera. But when we don't understand how that works, we can think that it's all up to us, right? And our mind tries to control our process and gets very, very frustrated when things don't happen um, and we don't understand that, oh, okay, this is a logical process. And in a logical process, it's going to have all these stages. And so I'm just inviting you guys to look at your process and places where you have logical and especially um, logical thinking or logical talent. And I'll talk about logical talent in a minute and understand that you may feel very blocked when in fact nothing is blocked uh, and, 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 and it's just the nature of the logical process. All right, so it's a fuel or pressure. So we talk about fuel and pressure in the head exactly as we talk about fuel and pressure in the root. Um, it's an, the, the mechanics of this energy is a mental pattern focused on the future, right? And it starts with the question. And again, this is from um, the book of letters. Um, it's uh, this uh, 
uh, these two um, citations, fuel pressure of suspicion pattern or not, energy mechanic, mental, mental patterns, focus on the future. By the way, pay attention to all of these keywords. Focus is the name of the channel 952, the channel that nine is in the um, uh, root and 52 is in the sacral. And that is another part of the logical cycle. So when you are doing a chart reading, if you read your own chart, if you have the nine or the 52 um, and you have somewhere completely different, like maybe you have the 515 or maybe you have the 63, four, maybe, right? You can start reading in your chart. You can use the keynotes from other gates. Even if you don't have the whole channel, if you have say, you know, uh, gate five, which is all about a logical rhythm that is very predictable. Uh, the people who have the gate five are always on time and they have a sense of time. You can take that keynote from uh, the logical rhythm of the five and you can weave it together with other places where you have logical definition and you can read it all together. And that, that's how we read a chart. All right, I'm, go I'm spreading over too many things. So let me continue. Uh, obviously, it's part of the channel uh, of logic. That's the name of the of the sixty four three. Uh, sorry, sixty three four. Uh, it's very confusing here because we have the sixty four forty seven on the side here. No, I'm talking about channel sixty three four, which is the channel of logic, uh, and this is the keynoting for that channel. A design of mental ease mixed with doubt. So it's really interesting to look at. Um, and again, all these are from the book of uh, uh, from the book that's called from the book of letters. Um, and I love actually to 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 spend some time looking at the way Ra talks about the design of that channel because we then tend to kind of go to the dark side or the negative side, especially with a gate that's called doubt. You know, it's our suspicion or mistrust. That doesn't sound like a great thing, right? Um, but pay attention to what he says, that it's actually, if you have it, if you have that channel, it can actually indicate that you can have ease, mental ease mixed with doubts. So it's not supposed to be kind of always doubting and heavy and all of that stuff. All right. So I said that before, but let me uh, repeat here. Um, there is anxiety in the head and Ajna channels uh, in the 63.4. The fear is that it will not be understood. So the person who has this fears that they will not be understood. Um, there is the fear that you will not be able to share your understanding, right? So I talked about that. Uh, Ra talks about these two gates, the 63 and 64, as places where we have potential collective madness, um, you know, so examples that he gives for the, the collective madness, if you look at uh, Nazi Germany, right, when the collective logic was elevated to a point of, of, of you know, hopefully we all agree, <laughs> not great places. For example, the way they saw, I'm not going to even go into genocide, but of, of, of my people, um, but for example, the way they decided to euthanize people who had um, mental um, or cognitive disabilities, right? So the collective, this is the place where the collective can make a decision that by the very nature of the collective, we, the collective, whatever pattern you find when, when you are collective, you want the pattern to apply for everybody. And this is the, the disease or the madness in the not self of the collective is that it can get really, really totalitarian and scary when you're like, this is my logic. We should do this. We should kill everybody that is this or that. And then you go on to try to implement it collectively, meaning share it with everybody and wanting everybody to be with you in that logic. So this is the problem with logic. There is no way to guarantee that the logic is correct or incorrect. You can be a very logical person, right? You can come up with a, a very logical pattern that satisfies you, but in the collective, when you come out and you share it with the collective, right? Um, not just with the collective, actually, listen, this is where it gets interesting. It can be the tribe. 
the tribe tells us right is the only place that where mutations where something new can be accepted or rejected right so for example that collective madness if you know your crazy scientist comes up with something uh the place to shoot down that crap if it's crazy would be the tribe right the tribe and now we've just finished looking at the 49 and the 19 and the 37 all these places where the tribe can shut down um that that collective madness so it's a really interesting thing that we already are seeing as we travel through the wheel how these different forces um that seem so kind of fixed and theoretical are actually all very much kind of alive and flowing and they're part of this process that happens all around us all the time. All right. So uh, kind of in relationship to the, to the notion that this is where potential collective madness leaves, uh, Ra tells us also that this is a place where we have the gate of conspiracy theories and paranoia, right? So if you don't understand the way the 63 work. And God, I know that from the people in my life that have this, you can become really um, mistrustful, really um, suspicious, and it can become very pathological where it's like constant, constant, constant. Nothing satisfies that um, feeling that, that something is off with the pattern, that, that somebody is coming for, to get you, right? And then this is where you start. This is again, this is where paranoia and that kind of, of madness or conspiracy theories, right? Conspiracy uh, theories, without getting into your favorite conspiracy theory, whether you like it or not, um, they are all about pointing out a pattern that says, well, the scientists all agree that the pattern is this and that. But I think I'm paranoid about their, I'm suspicious of their intentions. And so then maybe there is a, an alternative pattern that I want to say that is hidden beneath, right? So this is where the doubt um, and suspicion could be very useful. We all need this, right? We all need as part of the process of logic. We need, we need to push and pull on the logic, especially because the collective is interested in applying its logic on everybody, right? So we need that push and pull. This is why logic has to be collected. But that does not mean that it can get to a place of, uh, completely, uh, of a complete paranoid place. All right. Without the ability for the question to be answered, the paranoia grows. So that's another thing. If you have this 24 seven and, and you don't understand, I'll, I'll put it this way. If you have the 63, especially if you have it as a full channel, 63 four, uh, I will also say if you have it as part of your cross or as the nodes, like if you have, a lot of people would have both the 63 and the 64. It's, it's very common if you have the one to have the other because they travel together. Um, it's very important for you to understand that your mind would constantly bring up doubts, and that's okay. There is nothing for you to do <laughs> with the doubt. It's not supposed to uh, drive your decision making. You could potentially have to do something about a doubt that you have, but you know that that decision is not going to be made by your mind, correct? Right? Your mind would constantly offer doubts. It's up for your inner authority, whatever that is, right? If your inner authority is emotional or if it's sacral or if it's uh, the spleen or if it's whatever it is, right? The ego. That's where you make a decision about whether or not you need to do something about the doubt. But your mind constantly having doubts and questions, that's a great thing. Just enjoy it. Observe it. Be the passenger, which in human design means just observe, observe the movie, the movie of the mind, your mind is a question in mind. That's great. It's interesting. It's inspiring, but don't let it make you paranoid. All right. All right. So here is the logic and understanding circuit. Before I'll go into the points, let me just again, show you one more time. What a couple of things here. Uh, it's hard to see the numbers. So I'll just, I'll name the numbers here. So this up here between the sacral and the G, you have the five, the, the 15 here and the five here. And this is the channel of rhythm. 15 is extreme rhythms and five are very regular rhythms. And um, I'm starting here because this is 
one of the channels that we share with every living thing, and actually with some, I think we, with inanimate things as well. Um, I'm pretty sure they have the five. I think they have the 515. Um, this is part of uh, what Ra was uh, describing that he received as the knowledge of all forms. And so every living cell, I know for sure, has the 515. So this is a very, very basic building block of life. It's not particularly human. It's all life. Right. So um, I can say a lot about that, but we will get to the 515 when we get there. Uh, here we have then between the sacral and the root, we have that 952, which is this focused energy. 52 is uh, the ability to sit still and kind of see the big picture, but sit still. And the nine is the ability to zoom in on a specific detail. And that is a very, very important part of the logical process. So another keynote for the logical process would be detail and focus and rhythm. So again, these are words that you can kind of start use to string together when you look at your chart, the places that you have um, logical um, definitions. Now, the stream, the mainstream that brings the logical process to the throat, note that, you know, there is no um, direct connection of a motor and the throat in the logical process. And this is why logic is always starved for energy, always starved for, you know, the energy could be money or the, the energy to sit and focus, right? Um, and this is why logical processes really can mess us up when we try to create. I'll talk in a minute if I have time also about the, uh, the tension between that logical process and the individual process of inspiration that comes down the middle of the chart and why they, they, they sometimes you know, present a, a conundrum or a push and a pull um, in, in people's chart. All right. 58 from the root goes into the 18 in the spleen, and then the 48 in the spleen goes into 16. And all of this is called the stream of talent. And this is logical talent. I want to talk a little bit quickly about this. Why? Because many, 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 many people have at least one of these four gates. Most people I know in their charts have at least one of the 48 or the 16 or the 58 or the 18. And these are energies that can be so difficult to understand when you don't understand logic. I know we're talking about the 63 today, but the 63 is the most available to our not self part of this whole stream. Why? Because it's the mental, right? We, we tend to make mental decisions. So the 63 is kind of the spokesperson of that whole process. But here's what I want to say about that stream of talent. That stream of talent is a very specific type of talent. It's logical talent. And what we mean by logical talent are all the um, places and practices where repetition of something, practicing something, having a practice, having a process of repetition, like the ballerina that gets up and stands at the bar and does it again, plie, 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 again, 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 right? Or the violinist that does their skills again and again and again. Or me as a writer, I'm doing morning pages again and again and again and again. That is that type of talent, and it's called the stream of talent, and it's called the channel of talent, that's 60, 1648. And again, we'll get to get very deeply into it when we get to those uh, transits. But this is what the, the process that begins with the 63 that we're talking about today, that inspiration for logic, that doubt, um, this is where it's leading, meaning the doubt is not supposed to become obsessive. It's only the entry point mentally into a logical process. And the logical process is one of the most complicated processes we have for human talent. And it's a lifelong process. And it's about finding a pattern that you want to um, experiment with and that you're willing to repeat the experiment again and again and again and again to continue to check. And if it checks out, and it's not a suspicious pattern, but it's an okay pattern, then we can do what? The job of logic, predict for the future our security, which leads me to talk about the spleen. So if you look at that circuit, you see, as I said, right, that while the uh, the other side of the um, collective process 
the abstract, and we've talked about that when we started the year with 41, and then we had the 30, right? We didn't talk about the 35, 36 yet. I mean, I mentioned it a little bit, right? But that is the mirror side. That is the other side of the collective process, which is the abstract side that, that has to do with different things, with storytelling and with these cyclical um, cycles of beginning, middle, end, and then you retreat, remember? And then you think about the meaning of what happened, and then you tell a story. That side goes through the emotional center. And so it's conditioned by the wave. And this is why you have to wait to go up and down the wave, right? Not so with logic, because the logic goes from the root, right? From the adrenal root into the spleen. And the spleen is our oldest type of awareness. And the awareness of the spleen is all about securing our survival. And this is why logic tries to secure our survival by by finding the pattern that is that would work so that we can predict for the future the easiest um example that i can think of like very daily mundane example would be weather forecast right in our world it's not that old i think it's like maybe 150 years we've learned with science to look at the patterns of the weather which is you know are very complicated but still somewhat predictable um and so it's also interesting that we can predict too long, too far ahead because there are so uh, too many uh, uh, permutations, right? Too many variables start changing when we go down the line. And as uh, this is why our predictive models are very good in the long, in the short term, right? They're, they're good for this afternoon. Uh, and we can kind of get a, a sense of what's going on tomorrow. We can get a sense of the next 10 days, right? And after that, usually the websites don't give us predictions for more than 10 days. And you also know that if you've ever looked ahead with a better prediction 10 days ahead, many, many things can change between the time that you looked at the at the prediction and between what happened. And this is kind of like another issue that we have with logic is how predictive is the pattern and for how long in the future could it be predictive? But this is the business of logic. All right, the logic collective circuit. So. Uh, a little bit of a recap of the keynotes, sharing every collective energy. You could use the word sharing to talk about uh, what the channel will do, right? So for the 41, for example, right, we can say it shares the fantasy that looks for an experience in the 30, right? Sharing. So here as well, 63 shares its doubt, shares its question, okay? So sharing. Uh, challenging, recognizing, judging, or critiquing, or enjoying patterns. So I, I offered, uh, I added enjoy here, because if you look at the 58, it's the joy of life. It's the fuel to start a, um, a process of correction of a pattern or a challenge of a pattern, but it's not supposed to all be heavy and bad and judgmental, right? It can be joyful, in fact. Again, I have that full thing, so you can see me enjoying, hopefully, right? There's a joy in me. I am sharing the logic of human design with you right now. I became familiar with it because I've repeated again and again and again my studies of human design. I, for one, love to listen to Raz, uh, Ray Viching recordings, and I was going to share with you guys today that I, for years now, I take walks and I listen to each line in each gate that is in the transit while I, while I take the walk. And that's kind of like my, it's just a very logical thing to do. And you can see that I'm a very logical person. And maybe you can see that I've gleaned a lot of logical understanding of the entire human design system by listening again and again and again to that information. All right. So repetition, obviously, now I don't need to explain why repetition is a part of logic. I just explained it. Um, but this is a keynote for anything that you read when you look at the chart and you read it, uh, look at, at logical definition, uh, understanding, I said before, and experimenting. So about experimenting, again, the, the idea with logic is that, and, and, and here I want to talk about like the abstract side of the collective versus the logical. The abstract side is about jumping into the human experience, right? In the 35, 36, it's the desire to on to the next thing, to jump into a new human experience. 
And that side is the side of the documentarian or the storyteller of the historian. The idea is you want to jump into a, a, a human experience, not experiment, experience. You want to be in the experience, in the human experience. Uh, and it's that kind of like uh, the world of Sullivan, right? Everything, nothing new under the sun. Oh, I want to jump into that. I know it's a part of the human experience to fall in love, to have babies, I don't know, to divorce, whatever. I want to jump into that. Then you are in it, in, in, in a, you, you need to be in it in the, in the present. But then when it's over, you retreat and you think about the meaning and then you come back out in the 3313 and you share the meaning with everybody. Great. Logic is about experimenting, not experiencing, experimenting, right? It's, it's identifying and recognizing a pattern, experimenting with the pattern to validate whether or not it's, it's a suspicious pattern or it's an okay pattern. And when it's an okay pattern, you can share it with the collective, and and the and it's it's also a, a, a an energy of leadership in the seven thirty one uh, logical leadership is about come with me, I will share with you the pattern that works, and if you agree, you give me consent to lead you based on that pattern. I can take you to the future. That is all the story of logic. All right. I'm really not limiting myself to the 63 today because this is the first time we've really gone into a logical gate this year. So it's an exciting moment to talk about logic. And it's interesting to see that, right, that we start the first sun transit of logic, interestingly enough, is in the inspiration in the head and and you know, not unlike, for example, when our first abstract transit was the 41, which is a little bit different, right? The beginning of the year, starting from, I'm doing this because it's this energy that comes from the root, adrenal energy, very different. Logic starts here in terms of the wheel in the 63 in the head. All right, here's another image of uh, the logical, the understanding logic side of the circuit um, in the wheel. And you can see here that whole flow. So, um, okay, I'm not going to go into all the number, but I think I just didn't mention the 1762 here. All right. So the nature of the 63, Ra says it's the pressure to doubt as an essential inspiration of the entire logical system. So again, I've kind of explained this. So now I can just go through. Uh, he explained that this doubt is projected outward at things in your reality, but also, and that is, you know, this, this is where it becomes a really massive writer's, like for me, it's writer's block, but creative block for many, many people is when you start projecting and turning the doubt inwardly. This is the place where imposter syndrome leaves. I'm kind of jumping ahead because we will talk about this at the end. Um, and so um, this is such a rampant disease of our entire culture and society is, you know, this, the, the imposter syndrome. And so it's very important to note that this is specifically for the 63. Uh, if you have it defined or when it's defined in transit or when somebody that you know has it defined, it's this pressure that you tend to internalize and turn the doubt into self-doubt. And it's not designed for that at all. So my, my first kind of homework or mantra for you guys, for your own unblocking and your own deconditioning is start Noticing, paying attention, tr tracing, tracking um, in whatever mindful meditation or uh, mindfulness activity that you have. If you do morning pages, uh, which is something I really recommend, uh, which is basically three pages every morning. You take blank pages and you just write a stream of consciousness, three pages. Um, but that's that's a different story. But but here's the homework. Here's the 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 troubleshoot for your creativity. Are you turning the logical doubt that is here for us to come up with inspiring questions about things outside of ourselves. Are you turning it against yourself? Are you constantly doubting yourself? Um, now, that can kind of flow into other things you have uh, undefined. So let me just quickly stop here and say, so how does that work? If you have the 63 and your G is undefined, for example, 
then you will have imposter syndrome about your identity because you would have self-doubt about the fact that you don't have a fixed identity and that's your open G. You're not supposed to have a fixed identity, right? Um, but this combination, for example, if you have the gate 63 and you turn it into self-doubt and then your G is open, this is a configuration that's going to be very, 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 um, it's going to prime you for a massive imposter syndrome. Now, if you take that same thing, your G is defined, you have the 63 defined, and you don't have definition in your ego. Well, guess what? Your self-doubt would be perceived by you as doubts about your worthiness. Your doubt would be experienced by your your mind, your not self, your passenger that's trying to control your life instead of following strategy and authority as self-doubt about the question of do you have worth? And then because of that self-doubt and because of your open ego, you will be driven to make decisions about your behavior by your need to try to prove to somebody else that you are whatever, that you're smart, that you're great, that you're a good mom, that you're a great lover. I don't know what that is. Um, but that's another way, right, to start looking at, uh, so for example, if you have the 63, but uh, in your spleen is not defined, what does the spleen do? The spleen makes you hold on to things that are not good for you um, because you're afraid. So spleen is a, is a, is a uh, anxiety, you know, and, 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 and fear center. Um, if you don't have it defined, you might hold on to things that no longer serve you and that are not good for you. So your doubt would be about, for example, you have an abusive partner, but instead of being able to let go of that partnership, uh, you will doubt that you can make it on your own. You will tell yourself a story where that partner is somehow important for your safety, although it's the exact opposite, right? You will doubt your own judgment of the, of the, of, of the relationship, of your reality, and you will continue to choose to stay in a relationship that's abusive. So just a couple of three examples, right? If your sling is open and you have the 63, if your G or your ego is open and you have the 63. So these are um, kind of little formulas that you can use for your own chart looking at these things. All right. Uh, Russ says the pressure, this pressure or pressure of uncertainty demands proof fact and substantiation. So this, the, the doubt from the 63, right? That's what it is about. It's like asking whether or not you have, um, hang on, I have too much light coming in from this. Sorry, I'm back. All right. So, um, right. So this is a place where you demand proof, you demand facts, you demand substantiation. Um, and the doubt should only be the beginning of the understanding process, not the end. So I'm going to stop here and just um, remind everybody another big topic that I'm going to cover all through the years. We're going to go through these, um, these, these transits is the issue of having a process. So now that we understand a little bit, we just started looking at logic. And as you saw, there were a lot of transits that are coming our way that are going to, to, to take us down that rabbit hole of logic. Um, and, and I call it the rabbit hole of logic because it tends to really mess with our heads when we are called on um, to express or to leave out um, you know, th th those logical processes. And the reason is, and the big topic I'm, 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 I'm just going to mention, move on, is that you cannot hope to have a, a healthy, sustainable, creative practice if you don't understand that creativity is conditioned always um, by having a process, right? So while we tend to experience creativity as um, the stereotype of the individual creative impulse, and that is a very important part of creativity, is, that moment when the news come and it comes through you, right? So that would be, um, you know, gate one, gate two, or like their channel, like 14, eight, you know, two, like all of that middle, the 43, the 23, and we will talk about all of these. But this is just that innovative, mutative pulse that comes and gives you this news, that aha moment, right? That epiphany. Um, and with that, it's also important to have a process because remember, 
it comes when it comes and you have to have a process when you're able to wait for the news. But then I think of it almost as a relay race, you know, when there's a couple of people in the team and they have to give each other the baton and, and pass it. I feel like when you get that, that, that download, that news, that moment of individual aha mutation, um, or maybe, you know, I'm just talking my own design because I have the 3955, which is very individual. And then it goes into that whole stream of talent. For me, I feel like the baton then goes from, okay, I waited for the news. I got the news. Now I'm going to make uh, it into a thing in the world by going and doing my, my creative practice, which is about repeating and repeating and writing another draft and correcting the draft and letting somebody else read the draft, right? The, the whole logical process of making it releasing it, getting feedback. Feedback is basically other people looking at your logic, giving you corrections, right? E learning to accept that, going back, making corrections, letting other people read it again. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat until you have the thing. Now, I am very much a writer, so you know I, I know it looks a little bit different in other processes, um, but I can see the parallels with anything you know, from filmmaking to uh, culinary schools right, where you are uh, in, 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 in your creativity, in the push and the pull between these moments of creative mutation, whoa, this is my mutation, I want to share it, right, and if you have in your own chart, in your own process, places where you have logical talent, then these are the places where you have to develop Patience with and 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 the patience is also to tolerate the anxiety because the logical talent is a place of anxiety. And the anxiety, I think, is part of what gives us that fuel to repeat, 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 right? Because only if you know, I don't I don't want to make it sound bad. It's like only if you're anxious, you're gonna have the energy to continue to um um repeat the experiment but in a way it is right it's this anxious energy and anxious can be excited and joyful as well right like you need that joyful energy to give you the power for the logical experiment that's always about repeating again and again and again i would love to hear if this is clear and if you guys have questions of course you can um put those in the uh, chat in uh if you're watching this on um, on Facebook right now or even later, I would love to get questions about this and I will answer all your questions. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, feel free to write comments or join us on the Facebook group, Unblock with Human Design. All right, the Earth Polarity is, as I said before, it's gate 64. And here I have up here the, uh, the entire collective uh, circuit, which is both the logical side here and then the uh, abstract side here. Um, um, and we're going to talk about the 64 sitting there across from the 63, which is really interesting. So very, very heavy, heavy in the head right now, oh, that whenever we have the 63 and 64. Um, the 64 is the ab abstract collective gate, and it is about confusion. And on the bright side, making sense. So think about it. When we have the 63, and the 64, we, we often have them together. What do we have? Mental doubt and confusion. Fantastic, right? This is what gives the collective creative process its bad name because we start, start with confusion and we start with doubt. What to do? Here is my advice. Accept it, radical acceptance. So if we understand that our mental pressure, and it's a lot of pressure, um, around the inspiration that we have for collective processes, uh, whether it's the collective abstract side, which is about throwing yourself into human experience, being in the experience, and then you know making sense of the experience and sharing, or the collective logic side, which is about finding a pattern, experimenting the pattern, and if the pattern is correct and can predict our security in the future, then sharing with everybody. These are long processes. They're usually collective processes, by, in, in, and by which I mean we actually need to collaborate in those processes. And we start with confusion. We start with doubt. So I remember my mantra um, that I've taught you before. Uh, I think it was about melancholy where I'm like, oh, good, I'm stuck or oh, good, I'm feeling blocked or I'm feeling sad or melancholy. 
Um, I want you to also practice the mantra here. Oh, good, I am experiencing doubt and confusion. So learn to accept doubt and confusion as the powerful inspirations that they are for our collective creative processes. All right. So um, as I said before, the abstract is the mirror, right? So the 64 is the mirror um, ab, uh, in the, on the abstract collective inspiration side, it, meaning it mirrors the logical one. Uh, another collective pressure to make sense or not. So in the abstract, it's storytelling, right? So it's making sense of your human experience, not experiment, experience, right? And um, it's mental activity. So that's for the whole channel. <clears throat> when we talk about the, the 6447, uh, it's uh, a design for mental activity mixed with clarity. I, if we were in the class right now, I would say, Please raise your hand if you want to guess why the word clarity is there. Why is the word clarity there? Because the abstract size goes through, ding, 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 the emotional solar plex center. This is why the word clarity. Do you see the keynoting that I'm trying to show you? You will learn how to read a human design chart by watching my, <laughs> my transits this year. So the word clarity is there because... Although we are looking at the 64 up in the head, all the way up here, right? And the 47, actually the continuation of this process is in the 11. It's kind of interesting. The, the, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into why uh, this happens, but uh, we start on the left side of the, of the head and then we go on the right side between the Ajna. Um, the 1156 is the continuing of abstract, and then it goes into the 35, 36, and through the, sol the solar plex to the root, right? So this is why the word clarity is a part of this, of here. And this is why the word recognition is the part of the 63, because it's what the spleen does, recognizes. So the spleen recognizes in the moment. So the 63 doubts in the moment. The Solar plex gets clarity over time. So making sense in the 64 is happens over time and is about clarity. Hope that makes sense. All right. Let's talk about the channel mate of the 63, which is the gate four. Um, the gate four, and again, I'm going to be real quick because we're going to have a whole uh, webinar only on gate four when we get, when we get there uh, in the transit, which... Well, it will be six, like uh, about half a year, like six months from now, because, right, we are going down there. Um, it's the mirror of the, oh, no, 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 sorry. That's the 60, that's the 64. No, the four is going to happen in a different time. I'm not sure when. That's a mistake, right? I'm not talking about the 64, which is the polarity. I'm talking about the gate four, which is across from the 63 in the head, sorry, channel. All right, so gate four, youthful folly, is the gate of, formulization. So in easy English, if the gate 63 is the gate of the question, the gate four is where we get answers. So it's the energy to come up with an answer. And Ra tells us that the answer is a formula. You come up with a formula in the logical process. Answers are a formula and right answers are formulas. And then you uh, experiment with the formula, potential awareness to judge what is suspicious in the pattern or not. So this is the four. You see how the four and the 63 are very much, um, um, they're kind of part of the same process in terms of that channel really all works, right? So 63 doubts and has the energy to question. And then 64 has the energy to come up with an answer, with a, a pattern, uh, and also to record, to judge what is suspicious. So basically, the 63 doubts everything, and the four is like, this is suspicious, this is not suspicious. I will answer, I, it's it's almost like, right, the, um, in the, at the end of the panel, where the, moderate, this, the moderator decides which questions to take, right? So the moderator takes all the questions from the audience and makes a selection. Which are the, the, the patterns that the, the, the 63 doubted are worth experimenting with, right? Because the four can say, mm, you doubt this, but this time is okay. We don't need to start a whole process in the logic to verify whether or not this pattern is suspicious, 
So that's the place of the four. All right. So the awareness potential here is concentration. Again, remember, focus, concentration. Concentration on the pattern that is the answer. And the potential is to have answers for the doubt. But answers are only potentials. They're, uh, an answer is only a potential. It's a formula. And it's just the beginning of logical awareness. It's not the end. You only verify um, whether the pattern is and the formula is correct by constant repetition and experimentation. I'll give you another example. Um, I know that, I mean, I'm sure that many of you like me because of our love of human design. We also rekindled our love for astronomy, not astrology, astronomy, looking at the stars. And there are amazing things happening right now with the new incredible telescopes, right? The, the web and the, I don't, you know, they have all these names, but there are new telescopes now shining, literally shining their light, capturing light from earlier and earlier and earlier in the universe. And I don't know if you follow this, but it's really fascinating to follow this. And when you know human design and you listen to how Ra would follow science, right? When you follow science, suddenly, they observe something in the observable universe, right? They put the telescope on um, a black hole and suddenly they see something that completely does not work with the formulas that we have in place, right? So right now, the standard model of explaining how the universe was first created, the Big Bang and the dating of it and all of that has been thrown into, um, I'm not going to say a complete, mess but but definitely there are um you know they're calling for we need a new theory to explain what's going on because the way they predicted the uh the speed of the formation of early stars for example um they thought it was going to happen you know that when they will get uh, observations it will show that it happened a lot slower than what we are actually seeing so they got new information, the observations don't fit the existing formula. This is how mutation changes logic, okay? The mutation is we got a new telescope, we were able to put it, to direct it into the sky, and suddenly here's the mutation, here's new information. The formula that we worked out together in our logic collective process before, they, they don't fit the new information. And here is now scientists, the moment this has come out, you see scientists all over the world repeating the same experiment. You know, they will go and find that same data and they will recalculate what the people that published the first paper calculated. And they will come up with different formulas, different answers, different direction, different things that they can do to uh, offer an experiment to verify or reject the formulas, the answers that we have and that we've had for decades to explain what's going on. Now, everywhere you look in science right now with quantum um, and all the experiments that they're doing uh, in CERN, you know, when they're smashing particles together to try to understand what happens with neutrinos and what's going on in the quantum level, this is the same process. It starts with doubt. It starts with saying, wait a minute. Is what I'm seeing in the world really best explained by the formula we have, right? So back in the day, we had the formula that the world was flat. And then we said, oh, okay, the sun revolves around the earth, right? And then came new observations. Wait a minute. Mm, we don't think that this is how it goes. We had to change, go back and collectively re-experiment with the formula, with the answer, with the question. You guys are getting it. So this is very fascinating for me, the topic of logic. So uh, excuse me if I'm getting in too, much, too, in too much into it. Okay, so we have a sense of what goes on in the 63 and it's earth polarity, the 64, which is really interesting to think about how these two gates of mental confusion and mental doubt tend to appear together and what it says about our mind. <laughs> And if we try to make decisions from the mind, the problem with that, we don't want to be making decisions based on only step one of those processes. Step one is getting confused. Step one is getting uh, doubtful. 
We need to be able to tolerate that, celebrate that, that be with the doubt, be with the confusion, saying, oh, good, I am confused. Therefore, eventually, over time, I will make sense of things. Oh, good, I have doubt, meaning I now have a good question. And a good question could be such a gift. For humanity. If you have a good question, then you might, just might, with the help of the collective, with the help of these logical processes, come up with a better answer. And the logical answer is always here to take us to the future and, and be secured logically in traversing that future. All right. So creative potential and creative troubleshoot for these energies. This is all about not turning the doubt onto yourself. And if I talk about the six, so that's the 63. And if I talk about the, the 64 side of things, don't freak out when you're confused. Just don't freak out when you're confused. Be happy with being confused. Say, oh, good. I'm confused. <laughs> okay. I'm admitting somebody. It's, it's a little late for the game, but welcome. Those of you who are just joining. Um, okay. So uh, this is all about not turning the doubt onto yourself. The energy of doubt is here to poke um, to poke holes at information that's at patterns that are outside of you as just the first step in a logical process. Uh, this another creative potential and troubleshoot is the imposter syndrome side of it. You know, be very aware that your self-doubt is a misuse of that um, of that energy. This energy is here for us to look outside of ourselves into the world and say, can I predict the weather? Can I predict, I don't know, human relationships? If we invest money in this, will it bring every kind of decision about a pattern that then can guide the collective, not your individual, the collective behavior. And so you can lead the collective to have safety in their environment in the future. This is the business of the logical. It's not about self-doubt. But again, as I said before, we tend to turn this on ourselves and then based on what we have open in our centers, and sometimes it could be a split, et cetera, right? Uh, it can become a pathology, right? I doubt myself and my G is open, so it becomes an imposter syndrome about my identity. My ego is open, so it becomes an imposter syndrome about my self-worth, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Uh, as I said, pathological mistrust, obsessive paranoid potential resides here. If you have the 63, 64, if you're, I mean, I will say this, if your partner has it or someone you love have it, this can really save our relationship. Because honestly, if you are able to look at somebody you love and they are mistrusting of you and you go, I'm not going to take this personally. <laughs> it's like true story, right? I'm not going to take this personally, you know. This is not personal. This is how your mind is designed and you're in the not self. So you don't know what you're doing. So you're doubting me or you're mistrusting me or you're suspicious of me. But I'm not going to take this personally because it's not about me. It's about you have the 63, 64 and you don't know what you're doing. So it can really give you some bandwidth in tolerating somebody else's drama. Um but again, be careful not to turn this into pathological mistrust, obsessive, paranoid uh, behavior. On the flip side, as okay, so the cross of consciousness. So if you have the 63, 64 defined in your uh, sun, in your conscious uh, sun earth, um, one of the crosses uh, that uh, I think the other side of that is the, um, I think it's the 50 and the three, but don't, you know, don't. I'm not sure, but the 63, 64 are the consciousness side of the cross of consciousness. So what that is about is as a cross, it's really a place where our consciousness, our collective human consciousness can grow. And the people who come on that cross are here to doubt everything and to get confused about everything and to then do something about it, right? And leaving out their cross, they that um the name of the cross is the cross of consciousness because they help expand our collective consciousness. So that's the beautiful side of this. The people on the cross of consciousness, the people who have 63 and 64 are going to be the people that have a good question. They're going to be, you know, really um, kind of productive and sometimes provocative forces 
that can really get a lot of our processes going, especially again, processes that have to do with expanding our human conscious. So consciousness, so, you know, can be nice, right? Um, I want you to play with learning to enjoy the doubting and the questioning process. And that's a big one. Um, next time where you kind of are in your process, I mean, look at your chart, find the places where you have logical definitions and understand that these places are prone to doubt, are prone to questioning. And if that freaks you out and it makes you anxious, you can start slowly deconditioning from that by observing the, the positive, important, crucial role that questions and doubting play in our creative process. Uh, learn also to enjoy the confusion process. So that would be the 64. I will say if you have the whole channel, the 63, 4, um, just enjoy the fact that your brain always comes up with questions and answers and questions and answers. And a warning on that, these are projected channels. So please, please, please don't share that information uninvited. So that's another thing with, um, you know, the 63, 4, uh, and I didn't talk a lot about the difference between manifesting and generating and projecting channels. I will talk more about this another time, but um, channels have types. Uh, there are only, I think, like three manifesting channels, and those are the ones who connect a motor to the throat. So 20, uh, 34, 12, 22, and 35, 36. I'm trying to think if 45, 21 is, is another one. Um, but anyways, there's there, there's a very few manifesting channels. Generating channels, very easy. They come out of the sacral. And the rest, the majority, most of our channels are projector channels. And that means that whatever you have in those channels, um, these energies require that you are invited. Now, listen, I'm a manifester. So I'm not supposed to wait for an invitation. But in my logical channels, and by the way, all the logical channels are projected channels, I think, except for maybe the 15, the 15, five and the 52, nine are from the sacral, but the rest of them are, are projected. So even though I'm a manifester, when I am not invited to share my corrections, I get rejected. And so, I mean, I can get up and do it because I'm a manifester, but that does not mean that I would be correct. So when people invite me, so, for example, you know, you guys are here. I feel invited to talk about human design. If you book a reading with me or you take a workshop with me, then I'm invited and then I can share and it's great. If my partner who doesn't like human design, doesn't care about it, walks in the room and I go, oh, yeah, great. You have gay this and that and therefore you're like that, right? Uninvited. He doesn't like it and the door just comes down like this, right? So pay attention that with your doubt and your confusion and your questions and your opinions, by the way, because that goes into 1762 where you have opinions and your formulas and all of that is fantastic. But if it's not invited, do not share it. And that's a very important warning um, because again, this can be a place where you get really, if you take it personally, you can get hurt, you can get blocked, you can get stuck. They don't like my correction, etc. All right. Last but not least, this is from uh, the I Ching, my beloved, beloved traditional I Ching. And this is, um, it actually appears, and you know, I don't even remember in which hexagram, but it doesn't appear in either in the 63 or the 64, um, but I love it anyways. I think, I think it actually appears in gate three, which is the gate of mutation, and we'll talk about that. Um, but it talks about weaving order out of confusion. And I love that uh, sentence in general. So I'm gonna stop here and send us off with that mantra. What if you understand that we only weave order out of confusion? Now, I know it's that 64 that gives us the confusion, but it's the same with doubt. We can only end up answering the doubt and finding the pattern by doubting first, and we can only weave order out of confusion. So, for your creative processes, um, if you're watching this, um, as I hope you do with an eye out for uh, keeping yourself flowing and unblocked, if you're experiencing any kind of creative block, I want you to, um, you know, take this, contemplate these questions. Are you freaked out when you have mental doubt and mental 
confusion. And did you notice before that mental doubt and mental confusion tend to go hand in hand together? And isn't it interesting that 63 and 64 travel together as polarities? So they appear together in the sun earth, they appear together in the nodes. Um, and, you know, a few people would have the 63 or the 64. Obviously, they can come up in different they, uh, different planets, would sit, would sit in, in them, and, and you can have just the 63 or just the 64. But so many people have 63, 64 together, and many, many people have it as part of the cross of consciousness. And these are important forces here in the planet. So as we look at the year and the wheel and how we go through the wheel. We started with this, um, you know, we, we, with some, um, with, with, with 41, which is abstract and is in the root and the 19, right? We had this early on kind of like with, with the, the tribal need and, and all of that pressure from the root. We went through several uh, gates that were in the, um, uh, actually in the in the solar plex, right, the 49 and the 37. And we're going back into the 22, which is in the solar plexus. So it's really interesting to see the first time we went up to our heads was six and, and, and right is this week. And not only do we have 63, we have the 64. So two out of three existing gates in the head suddenly appear at this time of the year. So just in your own contemplation, in your own um, kind of deconditioning work, ask yourself, what kind of pressures are there this week for you in your process to find the right question to work with, to find the right, um, you know, what, what confuses you, what you want to make sense out of, and how can you play and dance with these energies without succumbing to the self-doubt or the freaking out is the imposter syndrome because you feel confused or um, or because you have doubt. All right, my friends, thank you so much for bearing with me. <laughs> These are long, but I enjoy them. Hopefully you do too. I'm going to end the, um, um, uh, the Facebook um, and YouTube uh, clip right now. See you next time. Um, and we are going to talk about gate 22 next.